I'm very pleased to say that this evening I'm now the proud owner of one of the new Intrepid 8x10 cameras. This turned up yesterday. Um, very nice it is too. Incredibly lightweight, very rigid, very similar to the 4x5 model. So without further ado, I want to take this camera out and start shooting. But I can't go out this evening, I've got other commitments. But I'm going to go out tomorrow morning, hopefully. Very early morning start into the local hills. Um, simple setup for tomorrow, just one lens on the camera. That's a 240mm Fuji, which is an f9 lens, quite slow, about a 35mm equivalent. And I've got just two film holders with FP4 loaded. So it's really a, a trial trip to get me out shooting with 8x10. I'm not expecting fantastic images, it'd be nice if I got one. But it's really just to see if I can cope with the size, uh, the format and the general handling of the camera. So wish me luck. So here I am, first thing in the morning up on top of Bukley Hill on the Sandstone Trail, one of my favourite locations, perfect for trying out a new camera. I don't want any surprises or shocks and uh, I want to have an idea of the sort of compositions I'm going to shoot and thankfully there's absolutely no wind. Now that's going to make it a lot easier to shoot with this big camera because it is a little bit more, uh, shall we say, wobbly, flexible than the smaller ones I have. Uh, tripod's a little bit marginal, so hopefully I'm going to be able to find some interesting compositions within this ancient woodland. Now the film I brought with me today is the only film I have for 8x10 and that's FP4+. And I've got just two film holders, so that's just four shots in total, which is hopefully going to be enough. Uh, and I'm also enjoying this early morning sun because it puts a bit of colour into my otherwise pale face, so absolutely loving it. Well, finally, I've got myself a composition. It's taken me two hours to find this. Main reason is my limitations with this format. I don't want to attempt something on a tricky slope, although I'm on a bit of a slope. I've got depth of field issues. It's a huge camera to set up, takes a lot of time. So I really wanted something which was going to be relatively straightforward. And I think I've got it. Now this image you can see behind me is another woodland scene. And I only have one lens with me, as I mentioned earlier, 240 millimeter Fujinon. And I have it set at f32. Now it's going to be a bit of a compromise with depth of field because I have got a quite a bit of distance front to back but it looks pretty good on the ground glass so I'm hopeful it's going to turn out nice. Now I took two frames, uh, two seconds, keep getting shot at, two seconds at f32 and four seconds at f32. That should give me plenty of shadow detail to work with later. So let's talk a little bit about the camera now because that's the reason I'm out this morning. I'm road testing the Intrepid 8x10 for the first time. Now, overall, I would say it was excellent. I mean, I'm not a big user of 8x10. I've never actually shot with one before. I've only seen one before I actually purchased this. I've shot quite a bit with 4x5 though. So I do have some experience, obviously, working with the movements and the, the awkwardness of large format and its depth of field issues. But overall, I found this a joy to work with. And the reason is I have so much more space underneath the dark cloth. The 4x5 is quite cramped in there and you know if you breathe heavily you get mist all over your, your ground glass. This is much bigger and the ground glass is pretty good. Now I have got uh, a Fresnel lens which I've cut out of a very cheap magnifier which uh, goes on the back and gives me better viewing angles with this slightly wide angle lens. But even without that it's pretty good, pretty easy to work with so overall I'm very very pleased so far.
Okay, that's the images taken. I'm going to head off home now and get some breakfast and a cup of tea. Uh, I'm going to get them developed this afternoon, hopefully, and get them scanned and get them into this vlog. Uh, at the end of this vlog, I will actually show you a bit of the processing and opening up the image on the screen. So stick around, it may be interesting. I'll also hopefully show you how I actually develop the film, although only briefly. I keep talking about doing developing videos and I will get round to it, I promise. But uh, that's all for the moment. See you back in the darkroom. Okay, back from the trip now and ready to process the two sheets of film I shot. Now, the film holders are quite large as you can see. Two sheets of film, one in each side. And I'm gonna develop them in my Patterson Orbital processor. Now this was developed in the 1980s for doing color printing, which I used it for in those days as well, very successfully. I've modified it, however, to do negative processing. Added a few little plastic studs to the bottom to stop the film sticking. So I'm going to put the processor into the changing bag with the film holder and get the film into the tray, all done in the dark obviously. This will be sealed up, I'll take it downstairs and start to develop the film. Okay, the first phase is to get the temperatures correct for my chemicals and also for my developing tray. I've got the chemicals, the developer, the stop and the fix, all in a water bath about 21 degrees centigrade and the same for the Patterson Orbital developer. I'm going to do a pre-wash now and the pre-wash is just to get the film completely wetted and ready for the developer. It makes sure that the tray and the film are all at the correct temperature before I start the development process. Now this Patterson Orbital processor comes with a motor base and I used to use the motor base. It automatically rotates the film around sloshes it about for you, saves you having to do this manually. But there are two problems, and the first one is that it's not that even. And with my 4x5 films, I often found I was getting some developing marks around the centre, where the little blades hold them in place. And the second reason is I can't control the temperature. If it's just sat there spinning around on a motor base, I'm subject to the ambient temperatures of the room. It's quite cold in Britain, so sometimes you, know, you find your temperatures drop well below 20 degrees centigrade. So I have this water bath which I sit the tray in and that keeps it at the right temperature throughout the process. It does mean I've got to stand here though for a full 10-12 minutes, rotating gently, swilling it about, just making sure it gets to all the corners. Okay, so if we take a quick look at the two images I've processed. First image, this was the one taken for, I think, two seconds. That looks pretty good, actually. I've got quite a lot of shadow detail in there, and the highlights, the black areas, they're not too dark at all, and it looks, yeah, it looks like I've got no camera shake as well, so, so far, so good. Let's look at the second image. 
And this one's a lot, a lot more contrasty, as you'd expect with more exposure. The uh, the highlights, the black areas, are, are a lot darker, but still, yeah, I think it's held okay. A bit more shadow detail, only slightly more though. I don't think it's significantly more. And um, let's scan them both in and see what they look like in Lightroom. Right, so this is the the raw scan I've just opened up in Lightroom. It's uh, it's pretty good actually in terms of detail and the the contrast is quite nice. Now I do a little bit of adjustment before I, I actually do the scan just to make sure I don't clip either end of the range. So I've got plenty of highlight and shadow detail in there. And the area I focused on was around here on this tree trunk. Now I'm just going to give it a little while to open up because it is a very large file and it's quite a slow computer. Now this doesn't look very sharp, but that's not surprising because it is an Epson V700 scanner and it's not known for its, uh, its blistering performance. It takes quite a bit of sharpening in post-processing to bring the best out of it. Um, but yeah, this, this foreground area looks okay. Um, there's quite a bit of detail in there. It's reasonably well defined. Looking towards the background, it's dropped off quite a bit quicker than I expected. Now that's that's my mistake. I've not placed the focus point sufficiently far back in the scene. So all these trees and this woodland is out of focus. Um, but having said that, when you actually view the image at uh, normal size and not this humongous 100% of 18,000 plus pixels, it doesn't look too bad. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that one. Now I took a look at the second negative, but there was a processing mark, uh, which I think has been caused by my Patterson Orbital. Now I've never done 8x10 in there before, so uh, it's an experience trying it for the first time, and I think I may need to modify it slightly. The, the blades, which hold the film down, I may actually remove them. I know other people have, so I may do the same. So let's do the, uh, the next part of the process, which is to uh, have a manipulated image and uh, compare it side by side. I'm not actually going to show you that, uh, that process because it could be quite long-winded, but let's see what I can actually make of this image. Right, so this is the image I've processed on the right. I've added a subtle tone, which I, I like to do to most of my black and white images at the moment. And I've done some dodging and burning. So you can see areas such as the foreground here I've added additional exposure and other areas such as around the, the background to these trees suggesting the, the bright morning light that was there I've actually increased the exposure with a little bit of dodging. So traditional darkroom type processes have been employed. You can see also I've put a little bit of a vignette around here by bringing in the, the edges of the frame so that concentrates the viewer's attention into the center. The other thing I've done is I've done a little bit of sharpening to the image. It can withstand quite a bit of sharpening being such a, a large negative and this would make a considerable difference if I were to print the image out. I don't think I will print it because it's not a particularly good image but um, it's it's a good start and it's taught me quite a bit of uh, what I need to know about 8x10 which is I like it. It's great quality, it's great fun shooting it but I need to be a little bit more careful with my technique and where I place my focus point. So that's going to be what I practice when I go out next time. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this, this video. It's slightly different for me, showing a bit of uh, process and technique. And uh, hopefully you'll join me on my next trip with the, the large format cameras. So thanks for watching this and uh, have a good day.